the free market libertarians, and in particular uh, Thomas Friedman, argued that, okay, yes, it's true. The world is very unfair. And he conceded that there's nothing just about this. There are vast disparities in the distribution of wealth, in the distribution of opportunity, capacity, capability, but he said that this is the way things are, this is what nature is telling us, and rather than have some idealistic notion of trying to get in the way of that, to try to make things fair, it only makes things worse, and we should embrace this disparity, embrace the fact that this is the way things are, because trying to get in the way of that, trying to withstand that, trying to stop that, is an endless battle that we can never win. The, the most famous ethical philosopher of the 20th century, his name is John Rawls, and he had, he had a response to this. He said this. It is true that there are grave disparities in the distribution of wealth in the world. It's unfair. But that state of the world, the way things are, that's neither just nor unjust. That's just the way things are. That's the state of affairs, that's what we have. What is just or unjust is how we respond to that. That's what's just or unjust. How we and our institutions respond to that state of affairs, that there are these disparities. And in determining what justice is, we must look at it through a lens of fairness. And to do this, he gives us a different notion of the social contract. He says that, imagine that we all come together in society to decide how we're going to divide up all of the resources, all of the wealth, everything that we have in the world. How should this be divided up? But we have no idea where we're going to end up in society. We don't know whether we're going to be rich or poor or a member of the elite at the very top or an oppressed minority with very little. And the only way to think about justice is to see it in this way. Not knowing where you may end up. It's called the veil of ignorance is what he calls it. That a notion of justice in any other way is going to inevitably be biased by what benefits us, what is in our best interest. And unfortunately, this thought experiment does not exist in reality. Every one of us, of course, is going to be biased, whether we recognize it or not. In the way we define justice, it will necessarily be defined and interpreted in a way that benefits us. We can't help but do it. We take it for granted, but inevitably, this will play a role. We can think of it that our scales of justice that we carry around with us will always be slightly tipped in favor of whatever it is that benefits us personally, even if that's at the gross and unfair expense of others in the world. And if that's the case, if all of us are walking around with scales of justice, with these bigger questions in particular, in which the only thing that we're concerned with is not necessarily justice itself, but we have an imbalanced scale that's favoring ourselves, well, the result is very predictable. Justice becomes the will of the more powerful, the will of the strong, the will of the mighty. Those who have power will impose their definition of justice on the others.